What's up, gang? Today we're going to talk about the war between the Case Gang and Stubby ENT, two rivals from one of the deadliest cities in California, Oakland. But first, let's drop the mother f- intro. What's up, gang? Let's start off with a little history. Oakland, California has been around for 167 years and has some deep roots. In the mid-1900s, around 5 million black people migrated across the country to seek refuge from the harsh racist conditions of the South so they could seek better opportunities, and a lot of them ended up in Oakland. Oakland started off as like a safe place, pretty much the heart of the Bay Area where people could make money and feed their families. You know, there was a lot of good paying jobs and the economy was thriving, but that wouldn't last for long. By the 80s, crack cocaine was introduced to the streets and there a significant increase in homicides and robberies. Oakland went from this peaceful community to like a drug ridden gang infested place in no time and the streets was no longer safe. In the late 80s, early 90s, one of those gangs was created in the east side of Oakland called the Nutcase Gang and they quickly became known as one of the deadliest gangs in Oakland. They got their name from the street they originally represented which was Walnut Avenue. The Nutcase Gang was known for killing and in 2002 they stepped their game up. Nutcase Gang leader Leon Wiley along with eight case gang members went on a 10-week crime spree killing at least five people and robbing at least a hundred in 2008 he would get a life sentence for his crimes and at his sentencing he cursed out the judge y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments most of the original nutcase members are dead or in jail now and the new generation run the streets and they go by case gang or foes they mostly hang out in east oakland in the 90s in an area called boss land and are known to frequent the hillside apartments off 87th avenue but the gang is not limited to that area you can find case gang members almost everywhere in oakland turn that shit down though but you know that shit stand the street y'all niggas say y'all stop yeah. busy we baby case I know what's up, nigga. Really Turn playing around. with some K's, dog, nigga. nigga hey, tell me the slot, nigga. Nigga, nigga, know what's up, nigga. nigga. Hey. Real, Please know it's poppin', boy. Yo, 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 Fuck you talking shit off, Money man. team affiliated, 100 rounds for demonstration, you bitch ass niggas. We out here. Look, 6-2-G, they know we repo brain. Call the op and decorate his face. They ain't be left with that. Hit it, bitch. 6-2-5-6-3-0-8. We got all type of games. Told you I had a bang bang machine. Come get in these. Bang bang. Come get in these slicks. In November 2010, Edward Hampton and Nario Jones was murdered in the 1000 block of 8th Street in West Oakland, supposedly by members of the Case Gang. A year later, Nario's brother would be killed by another Case Gang member. That's when friends and cousins of the victims decided to get organized and go against the Case Gang, so 2011 was the birth of Stubby ENT. The ENT part of the name is paying respect to their fallen soldiers. The E is for Edward, the N is for Nario, the T is for Taliban, another member killed by Oakland police. They also go by threes and they're clicked up with the twos, another gang in Oakland that are rivals to the case gang. ENT quickly became one of the deadliest gangs in Oakland, racking up multiple bodies. They will be mostly in the ghost town area, but just like the Nutcase gang, you can find members all over Oakland, which made them very, very deadly and hard to track. You never know what was going to happen and when it was going to happen with these two rival groups at each other's throats like that. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. October 30 of 2010, a case gang member named DeAdrian, who was 16 years old, was leaving a party in Oakland when he was gunned down, allegedly by a Taliban member who was close affiliate to Stubby ENT, and this further escalated the war between the two gangs. I mean, you know, things got pretty crazy, man. Kids killing kids, basically, in the streets of Oakland. On May 25th, 2011, two Stubby ENT members will be leaving Castlemont High School in Oakland, and they will run into case gang member Mike, known in the streets as Nutcase Mike. Mike. Mike will follow them to a friend's house and wait for them to come out. As soon as they did, they only made it down the street before Mike would start shooting, gunning one of them down in the street and wounding the other. After the surviving victim snitched, Nutcase Mike will receive a life sentence for the crime. This event definitely put fuel on the fire and ENT won a revenge. Fast forward to 2020, the killings between the gangs was at an all-time high. These two groups made the murder rate skyrocket with multiple bodies dropping on both sides. 
The war was so brutal that a lot of people left to surrounding cities like Antioch, California, and as a result, these cities started to see multiple deaths attributed to the ongoing beef. On June 25, 2020, a well-known stubby gang member was shot on 77th Avenue in Oakland. He took himself to a local hospital where he was contacted by police, but he didn't talk. Two days later, on the 27th, a case gang member showed up at an Antioch hospital with apparent gunshot wounds. He was also contacted by police, and he also did not say a word, but we all know both these people knew exactly who was at fault. On that same day, the house where Case Gang member Don J. Young lived in Antioch was shot up, but no one was injured. Then a few hours later, Stubby members shot at Case Gang members 51 times on MacArthur Boulevard in Oakland. It's safe to say this war was getting wild and they didn't really care if they hit innocent bystanders or not. Not long after, on July 15, 2020, there was an exchange of gunfire between two cars on Hillcrest Avenue in Antioch. When police arrived, they found Don J. Young, the same man who survived the first attack weeks earlier, shot but alive. On August 14th of the same year, another Case Gang member would be shot down in the streets of Oakland. A little over a week later, Don J. Young's house was shot up again, but nobody was at home. Then four days later, on August 29th, Don J. would be walking down the street and his enemies finally caught up with him and succeeded in taking his life. Police investigated and quickly found out that Don J. was a case gang member and this wasn't a random act of violence. Nearby security cameras caught a silver Windstar van leaving the scene of the crime which had very distinct damage. Like almost always, somebody snitched and Charles Bowden Sr. and Jr. would go down for the crime. September 4, 2020, a few days after the murder and retaliation, two ENT members will be shot in Antioch and left in critical condition. A couple days later, there will be a candlelight ceremony at Don J. Young's house and ENT members will pull up firing multiple rounds, but no one was hit. Two weeks later, ENT members fired 50 shots at the Hillside Apartments in Oakland where case gang members were known to hang out on a regular basis. I mean, I don't know anybody in their right mind who would choose to live in these apartments at this time, but some people had no choice. It's crazy, man. In April, April 2021, tired of all the shootings, police assembled a task force to take down both gangs. They dubbed this Operation Windstar after the Windstar van from Don Jay's murder. When Don Zay Young was found shot to death in Antioch last August, it led to the unraveling of a war between rival gangs, Case, the other ENT. Young was an active Case criminal street gang member, and he was targeted by a rival criminal street gang known as ENT. Sketches of the shooters were released as part of the larger narrative Antioch Police Chief Tammany Brooks said began to unfold. Young's death was part of a gang battle that would eventually lead to the seizure of more than 40 weapons, cash, body armor, and linked the shootings of five people in Antioch to six shootings and one homicide in Oakland. The cases unfolded over the last year. They have been the focus of violence in the city of Oakland for far too many years and will continue to relentlessly follow up on their activity. Oakland's newly minted police chief acknowledged tensions between the groups and vowed to fix the problem while at the same time expressing regret. I owe this city an apology that the group and gang violence that started in Oakland has now found itself in the city of Antioch. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We are a new channel and we do need people. Um, we up and coming. We the underdog, man. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's get it.